Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of April. Fuel prices continue to soar in India, 13th hike in 15 days, leaving commuters threatened. Sri Lankan's protest as economic crisis hits commoners in form of exorbitant inflation. And Pakistan court seeks record of no-confidence proceedings in Parliament at Jan's hearing till Wednesday. And now for all the details. Fuel price across India continued to surge with an increase of 80 paise per litre on Tuesday. This is the 13th revision in the fuel prices in 15 days. Prices are set to be raised further given the sharp jump in crude oil prices in the international markets, which will have a cascading impact on the prices of other items. India imports nearly 85% of its crude oil requirements at present and crude oil prices have been volatile on fears of tight supplies due to sanctions against Russia. Petrol and diesel prices across India were hiked by 80 paise per litre on Tuesday, taking the total increase to rupees 9.20. This is the 13th revision in the fuel prices in 15 days. Petrol and diesel in capital New Delhi now cost rupees 104.61 and rupees 95.87 per litre respectively. While in Mumbai, petrol cost rupees 119.67 per litre after an increase of 84 paise and diesel at rupees 103.92, increased by 85 paise. Rising fuel prices have a cascading effect on the price of every other item, mainly because of higher transportation costs. Some Delhi residents complained how this has affected their daily lives. Bahut, sir, bahut kafi manga hai, sir. And now we have a budget kharaab ho raha hai, sir. Kafi budget kharaab ho raha hai. 3-4 rupees extra badte jai, bad gaya hai, kafi ho. Fuel rates vary from state to state depending upon the incidence of local taxation. The increase in prices has also created a political uproar as the opposition has been staging protests and demanding a decrease in fuel prices. There had been a pause in the revision of fuel prices since November 4 last year, which ended on March 22, following the crude oil prices going upwards in the wake of the Russian military operations in Ukraine. Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Hardeep Singh Puri informed the parliament on Tuesday that petrol prices hiked in India are one-tenth of prices hiked in other countries. He stated that the United States has increased gasoline prices by 51 percent between April 2021 and March 22, while the prices in Spain surged by 58 percent. Meanwhile, prices are set to be raised further given the sharp jump in crude oil prices in the international markets. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's ruling coalition lost its majority in parliament on Tuesday after at least 41 lawmakers walked out of the alliance amid growing unrest over an economic crisis. Meanwhile, spontaneous street protests continued as the country's worst economic crisis in decades have hit the common man in form of skyrocketing inflation. At least 41 lawmakers walked out of Sri Lanka's ruling coalition on Tuesday, leaving President Gotapaya Rajapaksa's government in a minority in the parliament amid growing unrest over an economic crisis. In another setback, Finance Minister Ali Sabri also resigned a day after his appointment. This came as street demonstrations against the food and fuel shortages triggered by a lack of foreign exchange for imports intensified on Tuesday. Agitating locals in capital Colombo on Tuesday expressed resentment over the crisis that has hit the common man with prices of fruits and vegetables more than doubled over the past four to eight weeks. All what we want is a peaceful country. We, we don't want any other solution. Just Rajapaksha should get out of this country and they should bring back all the money that they robbed. It's about 19 billion we have heard. We have heard not from outsiders, from the own politicians we have heard that they have robbed 19 billion rupees. It's a peaceful life, a life that we can live properly, that we will have the bare necessities like gas, fuel, food. Rajapaksa had early on Monday dissolved his cabinet and sought to form a unity government, but the opposition parties rejected the offer. 
There should not be a voice that is contrary to the voice on the streets that is demanding change, leader of the opposition Sajid Premdasa said. Pakistan Supreme Court has adjourned until Wednesday a hearing to decide the legality of Prime Minister Imran Khan's blocking of an opposition bid to oust him through a no-confidence vote. The top court on Tuesday said it would not interfere in policy matters and would focus if the move was constitutional. Pakistan Supreme Court on Tuesday sought the record of National Assembly proceedings on March 31. The day Deputy Speaker Qasim Suri blocked a no-confidence vote against Prime Minister Imran Khan and the Premier dissolved the Parliament. During Tuesday's hearing, Chief Justice Umar Atta Bandial said, Our concern is about the legality of the ruling of the Speaker. We don't want to indulge in policy matters. Opposition lawyer Makhdoom Ali Khan said Imran Khan's actions were a violation of the Constitution. The top court will now hear from Imran Khan's team on Wednesday. 69-year-old Khan had lost his parliamentary majority last week and was widely expected to lose the no-confidence vote tabled by a united opposition on Sunday. But the deputy speaker of the parliament, a member of Khan's party, threw out the motion, ruling it was part of a foreign conspiracy and unconstitutional. Meanwhile, PMLN president and leader of the opposition in the National Assembly, Shehbaz Sharif, on Tuesday asked Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa and spy agency ISI to present evidence before the nation on whether the opposition leaders have committed treason, as PM Khan has blamed them of conspiring with a foreign country to topple his government. Moving on, fish farmers in Gilgit, Baltistan have raised concern over unregulated fishing of trout in the illegally occupied region. They blame high-ranking officials have been giving out licenses to outsiders from parts of Pakistan who are ruining the biodiversity. Fish farming, most notably of fresh water trout, is a popular occupation in Gilgit, Pakistan. However, local fish farmers have raised concern over unchecked fishing, which they say is affecting the fish population in the illegally occupied region. A farmer blamed high-ranking officials have been giving out licenses to outsiders from parts of Pakistan who stay at the fishing points longer than they are supposed to. He urged authorities should also deploy security personnel to discourage illegal angling of trout fish. ये हाई लेवल पे ऑफिशियल्स को इत्मात में लेके कोई ऐसी हालत पैदा नहीं करेंगे जिसमें कम्युनिटी जो है ना परेशान हो और रोड मजली की नसल कशी हो तो मेरा मतलब ये है कि सिफारिशी लोग वहाँ पे आते हैं तो लाइसेंस एक दिन का होता है तो वो हफ्ते तक बैठते हैं और वहाँ पे जंगल का भी बहुत ज़िया करते हैं वहाँ and the government has failed to provide any relief measures so far. Apart from fishing industry, shopkeepers, hoteliers and other small businesses in the region are also facing a similar crisis. Bamiyan is best known outside Afghanistan for imposing Buddhist sites which dominate the little market town. 21 years after, the Taliban blew up the two giant statues that once looked down over the high plains. With reports suggesting that Taliban will preserve the empty niches of the two giant Buddhas to promote tourism following takeover, Afghans want to see the statues restored. The Bamiyan province in central Afghanistan was once a popular tourist destination and the home of giant Buddha statues when the war-torn country was peaceful half century ago. With the end of the war last year after Taliban seized power, the hope among Afghans for rebuilding the Buddha statues as the tourist attraction has increased. The 53-meter and 35-meter tall Buddha statues with thousands of caves for monks around them were more than 1,500 years old 
and reminders of the Buddhist civilization in the region. The statues were destroyed by the Taliban in March 2001. در بخش حفاظت از آبیده ها و آثار تاریخی ولایت بامیان سعی و تلاش ورزیدیم دوستان و مجاهدین خود را در ساحات مختلف که آبیده های تاریخی وجود دارد در آنجا گماشتیم تا بکوشند به خاطر حفاظت آثار باستانی و همه کوشش به ای کردیم تا بتوانیم از آبیده های تاریخی ولایت بامیان in 2003, UNESCO included the remains of the Bamiyan Buddhas in the list of World Heritage Sites. In March 9 last year, the statue of Salsal was recreated. A 3D projection was beamed at the alcove where it had stood to mark 20 years of its destruction. Tibetans in exile in India held a candlelight vigil and a protest march on Tuesday to pay tribute to an 81-year-old man who self-immolated in the Tibetan Autonomous Region to express opposition to Chinese rule there. It is the 159th case of self-immolation since the year 2009. Exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala held a candlelight vigil and a protest march on Tuesday as a tribute to an elderly man who self-immolated in Tibetan autonomous region against Chinese rule there. 81-year-old Tafun Lak self-immolated for the Tibetan cause in Nagaba County in Tibet on 27th March 2022 in front of the Public Security Bureau office near a monastery compound, the protesters said. It is the 159th case of self-immolation since the year 2009. China has ruled Tibet with an iron fist since troops took over the region in 1950, and Beijing fears that any unrest there could pose a threat to its rule. It's painful. Uh, well, now we have this 81-year-old Tibetan man who have self-immolated. It clearly shows the kind of frustration that every Tibetan person inside Tibet has to go through. So it's just, it's painful, yet it sends a clear message to China that we don't want to live under you and we'll do anything in our capacity to fight against you. The Chinese government rejects criticism that it has repressed Tibetan religious freedom and culture saying its rule has ended serfdom and brought development to a backward region. Hundreds of women devotees took a holy dip in River Ganges in India's eastern Bihar state on Tuesday to mark the Hindu festival of Chaiti Chhat Puja. Devotees on this day worship Surya, the Hindu sun god. They believe taking a dip on this day absolves their sins. Scores of women devotees took a holy dip and offered prayers on the banks of River Ganges in India's northern Bihar state on the first day of Chaiti Chhat Puja on Tuesday. The holy dip is performed in order to thank Hindu sun god Surya for sustaining life on earth and to request the granting of certain wishes. Devotees believe taking a bath on this day purifies their sins. They also prepare food offerings made of split chickpeas, bottled gourd and rice. During the four-day festival, women devotees stand inside the water for long periods of time and observe 36-hour long fasting for the well-being and prosperity of their family. <laughs> Chhat Puja is mainly observed in Bihar and its adjoining states and in parts of neighboring country of Nepal. The festival will conclude with oblation to the rising sun on April 8. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.